Well, hello everyone and welcome back. This is episode two of our Mogadishu Somalia urban diorama scene. In episode one, we took care of the construction of the buildings and laying out the groundwork. And then in this video, we're gonna start adding a lot of the details that are really gonna make these buildings come to life. One of the nice things of using both the styrene strip and the foam quarter together is that they work well together. Just a little bit of PVA glue and you can add all sorts of details using the plastic strip. And that's what's happening here with the window frames. Just adding a little bit of thin plastic strip. It happens to be 0.156, the same uh, thickness as the walls themselves. And just making those window frames nice and tidy. You can also add some little awning structures made also again from plastic strip that will be over the front door. And one other nice feature is that if you peel off the paper, then you're back down just to regular foam. And what is so popular these days of just carving in brickwork or damage into foam structures. Well, you can do that the same way here with the foam core, just by peeling off that paper first. Once I have the paper removed, it's easy just to mark a few lines across, and these will become a little bit of a brick pattern where the plaster may have been peeled off or broken away from the exterior of the building. These buildings are not going to show a lot of what would be typical battle damage, mostly just old wear and tear, a little bit of disrepair. So in this case, just some of the plaster has maybe peeled off or broken off the exterior wall, exposing the cinder blocks and the bricks as part of the construction. Just to kind of set the scene here, this is a few days into the conflict. So most of the battles between the Al-Shabaab and the AU and the Ugandan forces have already been completed. And now these AU or Ugandan tanks are on patrol within the interior of the city. Thus, not a lot of battle damage, but again, the buildings are somewhat disrepair. Well, I mentioned in the first episode, when we were looking at some references, that one of the defining characteristics of a lot of the buildings within and around Mogadishu was the prominent use of corrugated tin roofing. And I certainly wanna to try to use that element on one of these buildings as well. So the next question was, okay, I need corrugated tin. How am I gonna make it? And there are some tools on the market and I'm sure they work really, really well. And I almost purchased one of them, but again, my wallet's not very, very thick. And so I thought, well, maybe there's a way for me to kind of MacGyver a little bit of a jig here to make this all work out. So what I decided to try here first is a piece of plastic, just a piece of plastic stock, and then I'm just gluing some half round strip. Again, this is evergreen strip, and I'm using the little piece of brass wire there as a spacer just to keep it evenly spaced between the half round strips. So I just went ahead and continued to lay these little half round strips on this piece of plastic, and there's probably eight to 12 of them in total here. And the length of the strips themselves, they correspond roughly to the length of what I would like to my corrugated in scale, corrugated pieces of tin to, to be. And then once I have these all laid out, then I just give it a nice wash of the liquid cement and that's just gonna affix everything and make it nice and solid for the next step. Well, then my next challenge was what material am I gonna use to actually make this corrugated tin? And I tried a couple of things first. I cut up some pop cans and used the aluminum, tried to use the aluminum from those, and that didn't work very well. I used some regular kitchen foil, and that was too thin and didn't work. And then I happened upon these tin pie plates from the grocery store. So I cut up a few of these, and then I've got a little bit of a card piece of cardstock that's roughly the size in scale of the corrugated tin that I'll be using. It's a little bit oversized because I can trim it up a little bit later. So I'm just using the tip of my tweezers just to kind of score some markings there just so I have a little bit of a template. And then once I have a couple of these scored out on the, the tin itself, then I can just go ahead with some scissors and cut out these pieces and start making my corrugated tin. Well, now that I have a couple of pieces of flat aluminum, it's time just to load them onto the jig. And you can see I've put a little bit of a header strip on top as well to the left where my fingers are. And that's just to help hold it in place. Then I have this little scribing tool. And it's just a little blunt ended poker thing. And I just run that in between the grooves of that half round. And just by pressing down and running it back and forth, all of a sudden I start getting a corrugated pattern. Well, this little simple jig means that for a simple guy like me, I can get the hang of this pretty quickly. And it didn't take very long at all before I had maybe 10 or 12 of these already done. And it only took me about 15 minutes or so. And as I mentioned, the pieces of aluminum, they were oversized when I initially cut them out. And then you can just trim them back to the proper length and width using a pair of scissors. I then move on to constructing the roof that this tin will be laying upon. And once again, the basis for this is a little bit of plastic sheet, 20 thousandths. And this is going to have a little bit of an angle to it. It's going to slope downwards a little bit to the front. 
And so I'm afraid that a little bit of the glue, just having the glue on the plastic to the foam core edges isn't going to be quite enough of a fix. So I've drilled a few little holes along the top edge and that allows me to put a few little metal pins in here. And that's just to secure through the plastic into the edge of the foam core. And that of course has a little bit of glue in there as well. But that little bit of a physical attachment will just help make sure that my roof doesn't slide off and fall into the street. Now that I have the roof securely in place, hopefully, hopefully it's secure, then I can just add these little corrugated metal sheets to the top here. And those are just glued in place using a little bit of a combination of PVA glue and super glue. Well, I guess the next order of business is to add a little bit of texture to these buildings. And of course, they're all stuccoed exteriors. And to get this texture, I'm using the AK Terrain's concrete paste. Once again, this is an acrylic paste. It's got a little bit of sand grit into it. So once it dries, you've got a little bit of a surface texture. And you can see that I'm using some water as well. So I'm thinning it out quite heavily and just brushing it onto the surface. I did run into a little bit of an issue here because if you recall, the foam core has that little membrane, that little outer layer of paper. And as it turns out, the, the water, especially because I'm highly diluting the water in this paste, the water and this paper did not want to play very well together. And so I started to get a little bit of separation where the paper would separate off the surface of the foam and a little bit of buckling. If I was going to do this again, and this would be my recommendation, I would just pull the paper off right at the very beginning, right before construction even started. Just peel it off the foam core, and that way you would avoid this entire situation of the paper reacting with the water. But hey, live and learn a little bit, right? And in the end, no harm, no foul. But I need to let that dry for a little while. And in the meantime, I'm going to turn my attention to the sidewalk areas and the roadway of the space. This is the sidewalk and the building foundations that were fabricated in episode one. And now I just need to detail them out. And again, I'm just using a little bit of plastic strip and just making some of the facades look nice and tidy and covering up some of those rough edges of the foam core. I'll be adding some steps and those are constructed from using just, again, plastic styrene strip, and I'm just nicking them up a little bit just to show a little bit of wear and tear on those. It's important that this entire scene is going to portray that idea of being in somewhat disrepair that the city in this area anyway is need, needing of some uh, tender loving care. And on the sidewalk, I just pull up a little bit of that paper and I'm just picking at some of that foam underneath. And this will represent some broken, chipped out pieces of concrete. I also noticed from a lot of the reference photographs that the edge of the curbs alongside the street, a lot of those are chipped and broken out. So again, just a little bit of hacking away with that with a knife and tweezers even and my nippers. And then for the street itself, that's going to be, I want it to be a concrete street, not a dirt street or dirt road, but I want it to be certainly broken up. So the concrete is broken up and a lot of the exposed dirt and potholes are underneath it. My idea here is that if I score, I'm using the blunt end of my tweezers, these ridges and potholes and whatever into this surface that once I start applying the textures, I can achieve this, well, hopefully this appearance of a really badly, poorly maintained road. Then I've got my sidewalk section. I'm going to do a little bit of a test fit on that and see how things are starting to look. And it's not too bad. At least they fit. That's a good thing. That's always rule number one. And I've got a little sidewalk section here on the front corner as well that's almost off the screen here. i got to do a better job on my cameras. And we're ready to start moving on. Okay, here's where we start going out on a limb. I have this idea in my head about how I want this broken up roadway to look, but I really have no firm idea of how to get there. So you guys are riding along with me as I'm doing an experiment. Okay, so here we go. First order is I'm gonna spread this texture, this dry ground texture over the entire road. And this is gonna be a very thin coating, but I want it to especially get down in all those lower areas, the areas where I damaged the foam. And these will represent, or this will represent the potholes and broken up exposed earth underneath what would be the concrete surface of the road. Then over the top of that, once this texture dries, over the top of that, I want to spread on just the high points, the asphalt texture. Now this texture comes, again, it's one of these acrylic pastes, but it's got a very, very fine grit to it. So it mimics asphalt or concrete very, very well. And if I feel like if I can just apply this to the high points and kind of, you know, random manner, whatever's the highest point where it has not been damaged by what I did to the foam underneath it, that this will represent the unbroken part of the roadway. 
And then the areas in between will be the exposed earth and the potholes and whatever else damage to the roadway. And then once I have that done, once that done is done and I let this dry for a little bit, I come back in with a little bit of sandpaper and just polish off some of those high spots because once again, I want this road to appear like it used to be, you know, a well-maintained road. And so it'd be nice and flat on those areas where the concrete and asphalt would have been. I guess this brings us to the end of this episode. We've done a lot of work this time and filling out the details on those buildings. And if you like this episode and like this channel, please hit that subscribe button. It does help. And hit that like button as well and ring that bell. If you'd like to support this channel even further, I do have a Patreon page and the link for that can be found in the description below. Patreons get to see early viewing of these videos before they release to the public, photographs of the projects as they're ongoing, peeks ahead as to what's coming up next, and often longer form videos where we'll dive into certain techniques and ideas even further. Well, I'm really looking forward to next week's videos. This is where we're going to really start making, uh, making this come to life. Painting is, of course, going to be the focus. And as you can tell by these parting shots, well, there's a lot of color that's going to be added to this scene. So it's going to be, going to be vibrant. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. In the meantime, thank you all very much for your support. Take care, all, and happy modeling. We'll talk to you soon.